Hello everybody and welcome back to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program on the internet. I am your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs. Woo-wee, how y'all doing? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Clear the throat. A little gummy from the coffee. Uh, I don't have a whole lot left, but uh, we're going to make do, huh? Mm. Before we get into the uh, subject matter of today, which is the Grail Psalms, in case uh, you were wondering, uh, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're almost at 1,000, and once we get to 1,000 subs, amazing things will happen. Um, also, uh, if you're looking to support the show, don't forget uh, to hit us up on Patreon for exclusive content, and we have a PayPal tip jar that sometimes I forget to check. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get into the good, 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 good. Um, this is the Revised Grail Psalms, a liturgical psalter uh, of Roman Catholic extraction. And uh, this book, uh, it's only 12 bucks, it's great, um, was, uh, it wasn't suggested to me, but um, my uh, choir director was a fan of the translation for a while. Uh, he thought it was particularly pretty. And I said, well, what the heck, um, I'll grab a copy and see what I think. And you know what? It's not too shabby. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Okay, a little uh, little history on the book. Uh, it's from the uh, Benedictine, blue, 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 I can't speak this morning, Benedictine Monks of Conception Abbey. Uh, the translation is uh, from 2009, 2010. It's a revised translation, obviously. Uh, the original uh, was from 1963, and that was based on the Jerusalem Bible, which we're going to get into that once we go over the translation. Um, the revision is based on the Hebrew and Nova Vulgata. Uh, so uh, what it does is it removes paraphrasing and kind of realigns the rhythm of, uh, of the phrasing. Uh, the Vulgate is the basis, but the Septuagint was uh, consulted. Um, so it's surprisingly close to orthodox uh anyway uh let's uh let me um let me show you uh the, the one major complaint i have about the book and we're going to come back to psalm 9190 in a minute um is that uh in a psalm like this where there's no heading the verse numbering is fine but the verse numbering where there's a heading uh, the verse numbering is like off by a line and so that kind of bums me out. It makes so it's it's not a good reference psalter. Um, here's a great example. So verse one is just the heading, whereas verse two is actually verse one. And so it, it can make a reference a little um, a little annoying. But outside of that, uh, the now okay, it's a trade kind of paperback book. But for some odd reason, just the size of the book. Um, and honestly, the, uh, the typeset is just really pleasant. Um, I find myself coming back to this, this Psalter again and again for casual psalm reading, uh, simply because I, I find it aesthetically pleasing. Uh, let's see, um, so for, for those of you that are not familiar with Western style chanting, uh, Gregorian or Latin chant, um, the rhythm might seem a little odd at first, uh, but the translation itself is pretty. It's it's really, really, like I would I would call this translation second to uh, the Septuagint Psalter from um, from uh, from um, um, uh, uh, Benedict Sheehan, no, Donald Sheehan, sorry. But anyway, so I, I chose Psalm ninety one ninety, um, and yes, we do have Septuagint numbering in here, thank God, um, because I, I figured this is, I, originally I was going to go over a whole bunch of psalms, but I figured Psalm 90 is really a, really a good way to go, because it's one of the psalms that we read in the daily cycle, if, if, you, if you're keeping the hours, so it should be a pretty familiar to psalm to people, so we're going to go through uh, this translation, and then compare it to uh, the Septuagint Psalter, and then also the Psalter that it was derived from in the Jerusalem Bible. So, let's, uh, let's get through this real quick, huh? He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, and abides in the shade of the Almighty, says to the Lord, My refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. He will free you from the snare of the fowler, from the destructive plague. He will conceal you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a buckler and shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, 
nor for the plague that prowls in the darkness, nor the scourge that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand fall at your right. You it will not approach. Your eyes have only to look to see how the wicked are repaid. For you, O Lord, are my refuge. You have made the most high your dwelling. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach your tent. For you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread, and trample the young lion and the serpent. Since he clings to me in love, I will free him. Protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and give him glory. With length of days, I will content him. I will show him my saving power. That is a really pretty translation. Um, and because it's set to um, the Western style of chanting, uh, that rhythm uh, that that verse to verse rhythm is very comfortable. Now, in the Orthodox Church, of course, we usually uh, we just straight chant things uh, with with um, with with uh, the normal uh, the normal intonation. So, if I were to oh, why did I lose the bookmark? So, if I were to go to He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord, My refuge, My stronghold, My God, in whom I trust. So, when when you chant it like that, it's equally as comfortable. I really like the versing and phrasing on this. Now, in the Septuagint, it's really not that far off. He who dwelleth in the help of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of Heaven. He shall say unto the Lord, Thou art my helper and my refuge. He is my God, and I will hope in him. So, really, the, the, the way it flows is very, very similar. It's a very pretty translation. Now, if we grab my grandmother's old copy of the Jerusalem Bible, <laughs> um, I love my grandmother so much. I miss her terribly. I think it says in here when she got it. 1979. So this this copy of the Bible uh, is one year younger than me. But uh, yeah, go ahead and try those phone numbers. They don't work anymore. So here, um, anyone who's familiar with uh, the Jerusalem translation, um, the English from the French, uh, what a what a what a, uh, a Hebrew wording here. Uh, if if you live in the shelter of Elyon and make your home in the shadow of Shaddai. You can say to Yahweh, my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Again, the flow is the same. Uh, wording's just not so so fantastic. So, um, yeah, like if I mean that's, that's that's there's your size comparison right there. If this is a fantastic little psalter. If you're a fan of reading the Psalms, um, and maybe even just speaking them out loud, because really these are songs. They're not words to be silently, but uh, but sung and spoken unto God. If you are a fan of the Psalms, this is a great little Psalter. It even, <laughs> and I found this interesting, uh, the translators, they were like, oh, here's here's certain Psalms for uh, certain parts of the day. And uh, yeah, morning and evening and night prayers, you know, straight out of Eastern Orthodox liturgies. So <laughs> anyway, so and uh, honestly, the notes are pretty cool if, you, if you're into you know, the history of the translation, which is not really that uh, exceptional. Um, they go into explaining why it was re revised and everything. It's, you know, but honestly, it's just the Psalms themselves. Fantastic translation. Really comfortable to read. Uh, really, really helps uh, preserve the poetic meter of the Psalms. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble on and read Psalms to you. I hope you're all doing well and uh, staying strong in our various struggles. Um, please continue to pray for everyone. That's it. Just pray for everyone. Stuff's weird out there, folks. Pray, 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 pray. Anyway, on behalf of Spooky Cat and myself, uh, thank you again. Uh, like, share, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And please, 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 please don't forget to go to church, say your prayers, and remember God. God bless.